I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. music and I like to jam and he's a con impersonating a cop believe that that's my partner the streets are safer put your hands on the pavement there is no pavement well then put him on the oodles of noodles chicken of beef the cops are cooler believe that <laughs> and the busts I'm a cop are bigger damn Food Street rated PG-13 opens everywhere September 17th Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. There's another Patreon review for Trevin, one of my thoughts on the 1999 film Blue Streak. Now, if anyone's ever interested in requesting reviews or videos or pretty much any type, you do, do so directly via my PayPal or you can join me on my Patreon. Either way is cool. The links will be down below. If not, no worries. But Blue Streak is a film I do enjoy. I do like this movie. I've always enjoyed it. It stars Martin Lawrence. This is a time when Martin Lawrence's career was going fairly well. Because he had Bad Boys and this movie. And he was doing quite a few starring roles. Because he had Big Mama's House. And then you have films like Black Knight. Which kind of killed that whole star in movies thing. He's... He would still work occasionally, but you saw him doing less and less starring roles. I mean, he was a bad boy for life, but I'm trying to think of before that what starring role he had. But it definitely seemed like back then he was successful on the TV show Martin, which is a fun show. Uh, funnily enough, this is directed by Les Bayfield, who is the same guy who did Encino Man and Flubber. And later on we do The Man, which is a pretty awful film with Sam Jackson. But I was looking through his filmography. And yet you had Bad Boys, Nothing to Lose, which I enjoy, Life, Blue Street, then Big Mama's House. But then, I mean, other than Bad Boys 2, sort of a, I mean... He did work consistently every year. But then from 2010 to 2020, he was only in five movies. One's Bad Boys for Life, one was his porn role in The Beach Bum, one was a stand up, Big Mama's House 3, and Death at a Funeral. I mean, think about it, for 10 years, he's only been in technically four movies and one stand-up. I mean, maybe that was his choice, but also in the 2000s, things were not going the best box office-wise. I mean, you had What's the Worst That Could Happen, which is very forgettable film with him and Danny DeVito. Black Knight, which is, I think, one of his worst movies. National Security that I saw in the theater was rather disappointed bad boys 2 i highly enjoy then you have rebound which is meh Bad mama's house 2 wasn't much of a fan of first one i think the second one was worse open season yeah wild hogs that was fun dumb fun i think that was successful welcome home roscoe jenkins death at a funeral college road trip yeah on all three College Road Trip, I barely remember. The other two, I'm like, eh. 
The other two I found disappointing considering the cast, but that's just me. But I do like Martin Lawrence as an actor and as a performer. I do think he's funny. I think his stand-up, like Run Till That, was entertaining. I do think when utilized the right way, he did do a great job. Whether it be Nothing to Lose, this movie, the Bad Boys films. I would say those are my favorite movies that he's been a part of. And I did some of those films I mentioned. There's nothing to lose. He's one of the stars. I Technically, the star was Tim Robbins, though. He's one of the co-stars Bad Boys, but it seems like more people say Will Smith is a star of those. Although you think about it, Will, Martin Lawrence had a lot more to do in Bad Boys 1. And then when Will became more successful, Will Smith became the f more center focus in Bad Boys 2 and 3. But with that said, Blue Street, very entertaining popcorn movie with a good cast, not only Martin Lawrence, but you have Luke Wilson, Peter Green, who is the bad guy, and Jim Carrey's The Mask, William Forsythe, not playing the bad guy. <laughs> also, uh, Dave Chappelle, I always forget Dave Chappelle's in this. I mean, even at the beginning, Martin Lawrence, Peter Green, and this other guy, they go rob this store where these diamonds are at. The other guy is the clerk in From Dust Till Dawn. The one who's talking and has the firefight. You got 10 seconds to live. And throws the toilet paper on fire and burn. George Clooney burns the guy. The guy that gets burned, that character is one of the three at the beginning of this movie. Because I went, that guy looks familiar. Oh, that's why he looks familiar. Does his shop just blown up or burned down, I should say. Well, blow up and burned down. And George Clooney's a low profile. Do you know the meaning of low profile? That guy gets killed in this movie too by Peter Green. Which usually when he's in a film is a bad guy. Whether it be The Mask or other pictures. And Martin Lawrence, you know, he steals the di diamond, but he hides it because he knows he's going to get arrested. And sometime later, he gets out and he finds out that the place he stashed it is a police station. So then he has to figure out how to get in there. So with a little help of some forgeries, some documents, he pretends to be a cop. Which is a cool... You go in these films not expecting realism but just escapism fun and it's for an escapism fun it's an entertaining idea <clears throat> and Martin Lawrence is rather funny I mean when he gets out of prison he finds it only has one shoelace one shoelace you took my shoelace men what you gonna do floss your ass with it <laughs> or <laughs> when he gets in the building and he starts doing the job well and they start believing him as a cop. I mean, he's paired up with Luke Wilson, who's a little bit naive and seems a bit new to all this. I like Luke Wilson as an actor. I thought he played off Martin Lawrence fairly well. One of the reasons I was disappointed with National Security, I thought, hey, Martin Lawrence, a lot of times works well with other actors. And I liked the other guy in National Security, uh, Steve Zahn, but... I don't know if it was the script or what the hell it was, but not just security, I just didn't find that funny. Plus, Martin Lawrence's character is rather un unlikable in that. Here, even though he's a thief, he's still a likable character. He still means well. Again, it's... I don't want to say it's Martin Lawrence's take on Beverly Hills Cop, but I guess for a solo effort, it's the closest he would get to a Beverly Hills Cop. Granted, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 are much better than this. But this is a masterpiece compared to Beverly Hills Cop 3. I mean, even though he's fake to be a, a cop, he's still, for a good chapter of the film, pretending to be acting like a cop. And he has the attitude, you see these ridges? They'll be printed out the back of your ass if this happens again. Every time you look at your ass, you will see my name. Uh, Dave Chappelle, I like Dave Chappelle. It's he was a definite bonus for this movie. Him and Marm worked very, very well together. It's too bad they never got the star, like co-star in a movie. Like they do in this, but I mean as partners or maybe if you reworked the script and made Marm Lawrence's character better, and I don't know, maybe 
have Dave Chappelle star in national security? Maybe better. I don't know. But they have some of the better scenes. Like during interrogation, he's being the shadow of Dave Chappelle. Because they're buddies and they're friends, but they have to make pretend that Martin Lawrence's character is still a cop. And you did they would not do this today because it'd be too on PC. But I still did laugh. I mean, I did find it funny from the delivery of Dave Chappelle's character. Where he's saying Martin Lawrence's real name of Lodian. He's like, who's Lodian? Oh, yeah. Do you want to know who Lodian is? Well, I could tell you he's the, sir, he's that he's day. Day, day, day. It's not the intention. It's the delivery of the line is what made me laugh. And Dave Chappelle sold the line. And William Forsythe, it was cool to see him be a good guy. And he's uh, supporting Martin Lawrence and Luke Wilson's character and helping them out. Just a lot of times you see him as a villain. So it was nice to see a change of pace and see Forsythe smile and have a little bit of fun. Luke Wilson, he brings a certain sense of enthusiasm. Uh, he's enthused by some of the stuff Martin Lawrence says. Like, wow, you told that guy, head up your ass? Man, that's great. Uh, his enthusiasm was a bit infectious. And Luke Wilson has that ability. Uh, I, he's an underutilized actor. He did, he did good in vacancy. I think vacancy just... I think the director was the issue because the same director would do Predators. I'm like, man, maybe if he got a better director and a more satisfying ending, that would have helped Vacancy. I don't hate that film, but I, I do think it has his issues. But I do like Kate Beckinsale. I think that's who it is. And Luke Wilson in the movie. I do like the idea of the movie. <clears throat> I think with certain tweets, it could have been better, though. But I mean, he does, Martin Lawrence does a couple of interrogation scenes. They're fun. There's one moment where he's squeezing the door and a guy, he's punching the fucking glass. They do this drug scene in the finale. Dave Chappelle's there. And Martin Lawrence is talking about how tough he is. He'll grab your guts. And then Dave Chappelle's just going off where, you know, I'll rip your tongue out and lick my balls with them. <laughs> Or even moments where this is there's two bad guys and one bad guy wants Martin Lawrence proved to be not be a cop, so shoot the other bad guy. So Martin Lawrence just quickly I said kill him. You didn't say that, you said shoot him. Give me the gun back. I this time I want you to kill him. <laughs> and it's not Action Pat to movie, the few that are in there, they're fine. I mean, in the finale, there's a car chase and some usage of stuff like a flare gun. But I guess if you're going to this expecting tons of action stunts, shootouts, you may be disappointed because there's little bits here and there and they're done fine, but it's more about the, the comedy and the situation. And like I said, it's a, it's a fun idea for a movie. Marlon Lawrence, definitely one of his better roles in the solo effort. I mean, I would say I like this more than, like I said, What's the Worst That Can Happen or Black Knight. I'd say even though he's a thief, there's a certain charm to it. And he, you can tell he's really didn't used to be a cop. He's actually really getting into it. And because of his background history, he knows how these guys think. And so he does actual good job as a cop. You know, some of the songs are fun and they fit the film very well. I'm trying to think if there's any really big issues I have with it. Not really. I mean, I can't think of any just issues. I, like I said, I've always enjoyed the movie. I never thought it was a bad film at all. Uh, it did decent at the box office. I believe there was talks of being a sequel for a while. 
something about this time we would pretend to be a spy and then a cop. If that was the, the plot, I'm glad they didn't do that. I didn't want to see him try to be a fucking spy, James Bond. Plus, the towel wouldn't make sense. Blue Street. It's called Blue Street because the men in blue cop. That's kind of part of the point. But, of course, if you do that again, you're just repeating the first movie. So, maybe it's one of those instances that you never needed a sequel to this. So, I'm fine with it not being a sequel. It, it told its story. He got away at the end. Things are fine. Some movies only need to be one. Sometimes you know, studios or people don't realize that. And again, the fact this was a one or a one off, I have no issues with that. So yeah, the Martin Lawrence, very funny in the movie. It went at a good pace. Never got bored. Never got boring to me. Some entertaining lines of dialogue, like some of the stuff I mentioned. The well, the actions there does fine. Maybe a few more bits of action. But again, you know, I'm always a sucker for that. Dave Chappelle. Nice to see him being utilized. I think fairly well in the movie. He gets, he got quite a few laughs. Luke Wilson is some nice support for Martin Lawrence. William Forsyth. Again, being a good guy instead of the usual bad guy. That was a nice change of pace. And yeah, this definitely worked better in the cop field for the director than the man when he paired Sam Jackson up with Eugene Levy, which is about as funny as a fucking slam to the face against a fucking brick wall. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, Blue Street, I just had a thumbs up for me. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.